In this module, we will be dealing with the posterior intercoastal arteries. For example, if we talk about the intercoastal spaces, the intercoastal spaces are supplied by a pair of anterior and posterior intercoastal arteries. So totally, there are 11 pairs of intercoastal arteries. And out of all, the posterior intercoastal arteries are the one which supply the greater part of the intercoastal spaces. But when we concentrate about the first as well as the second intercoastal spaces or the one which is supplied by the superior intercoastal artery. So the superior intercoastal artery gives off two branches called as uh, posterior intercoastal arteries for first as well as second intercoastal spaces and the remaining nine are supplied by separate branches which are arising from descending thoracic aorta. So let us again discuss about uh, the superior intercoastal artery anatomy over here. This particular superior intercoastal artery is the descending branch of the costo cervical trunk and this costo cervical trunk is the one which arises from the second part of the subclavian artery because the same costo cervical trunk gives off two branches one is the deep cervical artery and second one is the supreme or which is also called as the superior intercoastal artery so let us discuss about uh, the left as well as right subclavian arteries over here. The right subclavian artery is one of the terminal branches of the brachiocephalic artery. But whereas the left subclavian artery arises as the third branch of the arch of aorta after giving rise to the left common carotid artery. Right? So, the right subclavian artery arises from brachiocephalic trunk directly, but the left one arises directly from the arch of aorta as a third branch. Now, let us discuss about the course as well as the relations of these posterior intercoastal arteries. As you can see in this picture, we have a descending thoracic aorta over here. And this descending thoracic aorta gives off two posterior intercoastal arteries that is right as well as left on either side, right. So, when we discuss about the first one that is the right posterior intercoastal arteries are longer when compared to that of the left as a reason that the descending thoracic aorta lies on the left as well as anterior to the vertebral column that is the reason the right posterior intercoastal arteries are longer when compared to that of the left ones. So, here when we talk about uh, the course of these arteries let us discuss about the right posterior intercoastal arteries first. The right posterior intercoastal arteries runs behind the esophagus once uh, it arises from the descending thoracic aorta runs behind the esophagus, behind uh, the thoracic duct as well as a zygous vein and sympathetic chain, right, but where it is anterior to the vertebral body. But whereas when we discuss about uh, the left posterior intercoastal arteries which are smaller when compared to that of the right ones which runs behind the hemiazygous vein, sympathetic chain as well as in front of side of the vertebral body, right. So, every whether it is right or left, the posterior intercoastal artery divides into anterior as well as posterior rami, which is also called as a dorsal rami, right. So, where you can see very clearly it is giving off a, a dorsal rami as well as anterior rami. But in the intercoastal space, the anterior rami of the posterior intercoastal artery runs between 
intercostal vein above as well as intercostal nerve below which means it forms a neurovascular bundle by passing between the vein above as well as nerve below so the neurovascular bundle in the intercostal space consists of from superior to inferior intercostal vein posterior intercostal artery as well as intercostal nerve this forms the neurovascular bundle in the intercostal space now let us discuss about the termination of the posterior intercostal arteries the posterior intercostal arteries ends at the costochondral junction by anastomosing with the anterior intercostal artery right so this is about the course as well as relation of the posterior intercostal arteries now let us discuss about the branches the first one is the dorsal ramus which is also called as the dorsal branch this dorsal branch supplies the spinal cord vertebra and the muscles as well as the skin of the back and uh, the arteries also gives rise to collateral branches muscular branches and the muscular branches supply the intercostal pectoral as well as serratus anterior muscles and uh, you can see on either side it is giving uh, the lateral cutaneous branches we can also see mammary branches in females which are also called as external mammary arteries which generally arise from the posterior intercostal arteries from the second third as well as fourth intercostal spaces and supply the breast as well as the mammary gland and the last one if you see is the right bronchial artery the right bronchial artery doesn't arise from all the intercostal arteries but it arises especially from the right third posterior intercostal artery so these are the branches of the posterior intercostal artery so by this we finished uh, the anatomy of the posterior intercostal arteries